I'm being serious though. Alrighty, um, welcome everybody. Uh, I'm William Guthrie. This I'm is Joseph Mike. Williams. And we're just going to be talking about um, public and private schools, how they set you up for success, and um, what, everything that you need to know about all of that. So, um, Joseph, let's talk about your experience. Um, did you go to a public or a private school, and how many years did you attend? Um, so, a bit of both, actually. Um, from grade school, which I consider to be kindergarten up until fourth grade, I went to a public school. Um, just because it was the one in my neighborhood, it was the one like right around the corner. And so I kind of grew up there. And then from fifth grade until senior year of high school, I went to uh, private schools. Um, I would say that I don't really remember much of public school only because I was so young. But from the parts of high or private school that I remember, um, it was, I guess it would have been eight years. Um, and so, I mean, they did their job <laughs> as well as they could. I think that's a great explanation. So, mm -hmm. um, I went to a public school basically my entire life. I kind of mm -hmm. have a little bit of a weird area in the sixth grade where the first four weeks I was actually homeschooled. And then for two weeks, I attended, <laughs> I attended a private school. Um, so that was a little weird, but I only did it for two weeks and then I decided to hop on over to a public school and I did that all the way up until my senior year of high school. Um, so my high school was a academic magnet high school. So it was a little bit rigorous when it came to academics. Um, would you say that your academic rigor in high school was very strong as a private school student? Um, I would say, I would say there were phases. Like, yes, it was definitely a, a school that strived to like have the highest GPA in the, in the not the county, because it was a private school, but like the, the system, the school system. Um, Cause we were competing with, not com competing. We were in the same district, I guess, as uh, BT or Blessed Trinity. I, was, I went to St. Pius, just in any case. Um, Blessed Trinity, Holy Innocence and Marist in particular. Um, so there were several contenders who were like just striving for that end of year award. Um, so it was definitely like periods like, okay, uh, come PSAT time, like that's a, real, a time to like hunger down and like listen to your math teachers. Um, come time for the junior research paper, that's a really good time to uh, freshen up on your writing skills and make sure that you like um, avoid grammar mistakes and just other um, points in like uh, the academic year where you'd want to really hone your skills because after all, this isn't stuff that you totally forget because you're assigned uh, reading over the summer to, you know, not totally melt your brain. And, um, and I mean, you never really got a day off from math in, in high school. Um, so to answer your question, I think that the rigor, the levels of rigor would uh, come and go, but it was pretty consistent among the National Honor Society uh, kids. And I mean, even just the general student body just if it's a private school and your parents are paying exactly a bajillion dollars for you to go there, you're gonna wanna be able to like get the best bang for your buck. Um, so I think like as far as um, just like commitment to school, 100% as far as rigor and motivation, dare I say, um, I say you got at least 85% of the school really doing their best at all times. That's actually a really good percentage. Um, so just for a little bit of background before we go any further, Joseph here is from Atlanta, Georgia area. Actually Atlanta. Like if this is Atlanta, this is where I'm from. Like <laughs> just inside the North corner. So, and I'm from a smaller town in Tennessee, Jackson, Tennessee. So there were about four private school options for me and about three public school options. Um, I'm sure. He had a lot more growing up in a larger there town. There were too many. There were too many. <laughs> um, so standards. Let's talk about them. What are they? Um, how do you think your courses lined up with the standards? Um, I'll go ahead and start us off. Uh, basically, just based off the research that I've done, a uh, standard is just what's expected of a student to learn in that year. Um, and 
everybody has to go by it. That's how it is in public school. The state sets it, and that's the requirement that we have to meet. Um, and my school was a lot like college in a way, um, where the beginning of every day was, here's the standard, and this is what we're going to learn about it. And by the end of class, you were expected to be able to answer the question that went with um, that standard. So do you think, did you guys have standards in private school? Um, do you think your courses met those standards? Um, that's an interesting question because uh, at St. Pius in particular, um, there were three levels, four, mm, three and a half levels of standards. So, I mean, in most high schools, you have the AP course. That's like the highest levels of um, classes that they have. And there's like a variety of them and everything. Yeah. Um, and then the second uh, tier would be the honors students. Um, they took mostly honors classes. And then you have CPA, which were college preparatory advanced, and then CP, which is just college prep. Um, so of those four tiers of classes, like there were, you could take Spanish three of every one of those levels. You could take, um, uh, I guess, uh, every, everyone wanted to take A-Push just because that was like the coolest teacher at the time. Yes. Um, it wasn't necessarily about the class, it was more about like the learning experience that the teacher provided. Mm -hmm. So as far as uh, the standards go, it was as long as you were doing well in your area, you were considered doing well because like the placement tests were putting you in those classes for a reason. Yeah. You know? Yeah, cool. I understand that. So. I kind of want to bounce off of that. You were talking about AP classes mm -hmm. and honors courses. So did you guys have anything below honors? I know like at my high school, it was honors and up. That was all we were allowed to have going to an academic school, mm -hmm. even theater class as a fine arts was considered an honors course. Mm -hmm. um, so did you guys have, obviously you had the honors courses, but was there anything below that that other students took that maybe weren't as academically motivated to take an honors course? Um, yes, yes. So to reiterate, yeah, we had the four tiers. They were starting with the first with CP, college prep, CPA, honors, and then AP. So, I mean, those are all like the same, you still go through the same material. It's usually like, as the further up you go, it was like more in depth and more speed at which you go through the material. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, you like, it's not necessarily that you wanted to get the honors courses. It's more of, depending on how you placed, like that would have been your trajectory. And yeah, like there were some kids who took predominantly CB courses, but also took like, say there was one kid that was, uh, that came from like a, a French speaking household or a Spanish speaking household, I guess it's more a common example. That student would probably take like Spanish three honors and then also maybe like their, um, uh, uh, English lit classes at a, C at a CP level um, or math classes at a CP level, something like that. So there, there were definitely different combinations, um, but usually once you were in CP courses or honors courses, like that was what you were pretty consistent with for the rest of high school. Granted, there was always opportunity to apply for AP courses. Um, it wasn't out of the norm to apply for these courses. It's just when placed in the in those particular level tier or tier courses, that was what you would stay in. Okay. Yeah, I actually really like that because if you're just like, we're all naturally smarter in one subject. Mm -hmm. I love math and science. You're a JMC, I don't know. More English and um, history. So yeah. bingo, two completely different people at the same college. So why do we get along so well? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I like that it's like, it's focused. Mm -hmm. You know, you're taking your academically rigorous classes in the course that you're excellent at. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that could almost prepare you uh, for college. Precisely. And again, it's not so much as you had to stay in your level. You could go all over the place. So that's the, the great thing about St. Pius is like you were able to navigate through like different levels of courses. Say you didn't quite live up to Spanish three honors. You could go to like Spanish three CPA and still get the same amount of work done um, it was just at a different pace and uh, not as in-depth as, say, Spanish Three Honors. Yeah. Awesome. I like that. So let's talk a little bit about statistics. So I've got some sources here, some numbers that I'm going to point out. I have out. your sources here. <laughs> um, so just 
from my second source here, all about public schools right now, we've got 47% of public school students in this study that did not complete college or a career study path. So that could be going to, I know around my hometown, it was called TCAT, uh, Tennessee College of Applied Technologies, mm -hmm. where you could go and be a plumber or go and be a welder. And that was what you focused on. It was almost like a step down from college. You weren't necessarily going to get so a like degree. trade school. Trade school, mm -hmm. exactly. Um, so 47% from public schools, not completing college or a career study. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Do you think that's a really high number? Do you think that's lower than what you expected? That is an astonishing number. Um, I would have to agree, honestly, as of course my public school experience was much different, um, mm -hmm. but I did go to a regular um, public middle school and there are a lot of people that I know from my middle school that chose not to go to college. Um, not that this isn't a bad thing. My brother never went to college um, and he went to an academic high school as well, but not completing a career study as well. is just, that's a lot of people. And that's interesting because that's two different perspectives. To me, that's an astonishingly high number, but to you, that seems about right. Yeah. Okay. I would say it's, it's, it's pretty close. Um, to what sounds right to me. Um, so I've also got this little story that comes from the same source. Um, we've got a Louisiana high school student um, who's interested in dental school. And they approach their counselor, tell them their interest in dental school, and you know your counselor's supposed to be the person to set you up um, for college. So she tells him to take a lot of elective-based classes for his um, career for dental school. So possibly taking a medical terminology course or something like along those lines. Um, once he got in college, he realized that that wasn't very much help. Um, he didn't take very many college credit courses. And so we all know dental school takes years to complete. Um, and now he's stuck instead of possibly could have completed his freshman year of college and high school. He instead went ahead and took all these electives that didn't matter once he got into college. Um, do you think that this experience happened to you where you took classes that didn't really matter in high school for your college career? Um, or did you take courses that you feel like really prepared you for college? That's a really good question. There's a lot of, there's a lot of courses that you take in high school where you're like, when am I ever gonna use this? And you're not wrong to think that as you're going through them because some of them are like, oh, there was this major battle that took place in a country that is hard to get to these days. And it's important to know this because there was this leader, involved. like there's a whole like rabbit trail of reasons why it's important during, for that class. Um, but as far as taking classes that um, you don't really feel like you need or when it comes to taking a bunch of electives in college, um, you're, I feel like students end up taking uh, electives because they're required by the university or required by the school. Um, they just need to fill classes, so there's like a, re a requirement um, to do stuff for the major, or they take these because they know they have a bunch of spare time on their hands. Um, there are probably those three possibilities and more, um, but I think that, what was the question again? <laughs> Basically just how do you feel like you took courses in high school that prepared you for your major now in college? Yeah, so that's the thing. As I mentioned earlier, you had C college preparatory courses. Um, my major is journalism and mass communication. So what was important now, I didn't consider important in high school. So like we had English lit courses. Well, those, those were mostly reading heavy and like reflection heavy. But as far as communication came, it kind of stopped there. There was no, um, like right now I'm currently learning how to um, uh, write um, one body of uh, like a story and have it be read so that it can be read by many different audiences. There's not just one specific person that should be able to like read this story. Um, they taught us how to write mostly reports in high school, not necessarily like stories. So like for news stories, there's a very different writing style that you need as opposed to like a book report or a, um, a whole like a, science, I don't even know what the words are anymore, it's been so long. Um, but they, they've definitely, this classes in high school definitely aren't as useful 
Um, it's just kind of like, it feels like filler now, knowing that my line of study now is a completely different area of learning than what I was learning in high school. Mm -hmm. So academics, we know that academics are important, but our main topic here is how are these schools setting up students for success? So how are they setting up students for success? How are they? That is a great question. And <laughs> hopefully we will come to a conclusion. Um, Let's find out. What is success? And to me, in this perspective, what we're talking about is someone who is prepared for higher education, life after college, and financial success. So someone who is going to have a um, comfortable financial situation. Not necessarily rich, we all can't be the top 1%, but we can all be financially comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, and in my opinion, in this perspective, that is success. So. Would you agree, disagree? What would you add on to that as success? Um, I would say success is relative because there are different areas where you can succeed in that area, but there are also like different areas where you can take that, that skill or that um, uh, area of study and take it further. So there are like, uh, like it's like stepping uh, stairs, if you will. Um, so like uh, undergraduate degrees or bachelor's degrees, that's like, sure, you have a degree, you've succeeded, you have attained um, a piece of paper, <laughs> but um, you have uh, completed a course of study. There are places that you can take that line of study and uh, go deeper into it. Um, so you can succeed at one level, you could succeed at a level higher than that, you could succeed at uh, levels that are unrelated to that in the business life and uh, financials and even in like personal and family um, areas. So I think success is relative depending on your goals and your um, environment. I think that's a great way to put it. Um, so I'm gonna read off this interesting number here. Um, this is not specific towards um, private or public school students. Um, this is just college students that took this survey, 79.2% um, of college students feel, felt prepared for college from high school. Um, first semester, first semester. I was in the 20.8%. Okay. That would, did not feel ready. Gotcha. I gotta say. So that was, for, that was you're a junior now in college, so that was mm -hmm. a little while back. Um, oh. Freshman, first semester. Real quick. To make this clear, I went, I started college in the COVID year. So having abruptly interrupted my senior year of high school, I not only kind of coasted the rest of the way from March until graduation, but I started college in an unconventional time mm -hmm. when nobody really knew what to do. So yeah, yeah I definitely didn't, I definitely felt like the 20.8%. Yeah. And so that is, that's a unique perspective. I was in my sophomore year of high school. Yes, pretty <laughs> easy. Yeah, it, it, it was pretty nice, you know. Senior year was pretty normal. Um, but feeling prepared for college, mm. I, I honestly came in and I think college is significantly easier than my high school just because of the academic mm -hmm. rigor that was involved. Um, it was an insane <laughs> amount of work in high school and um, Every other high school teacher at one point or another said, oh, that's not going to slide in college. Guess what slides in college? That. Everything. Exactly. Everything. Um, you're responsible for your own actions. There's also a great degree of responsibility. I agree. There is a great degree of responsibility. And so I feel like that is what can make someone successful in college is mm -hmm. their responsibility, how on top they are for their classes. Um, are they going out and partying every night or are they studying and then going out with friends? No, I'm studying at the party. <laughs> have to cut this part out. <laughs> anyway, so um, what about life? Coming out of high school, how prepared for you were you for life? Doing your own laundry, waking up in the morning, going to bed at an, at an okay amount of time, looking back your freshman year, mm -hmm. first semester, as opposed to like now, obviously you've mm -hmm. gotten used to it, you've been able to teach yourself, but how ready were you freshman year? 
I can confidently say right off the bat that the systems that I am currently like uh, following now, I was following freshman year. Yes, there was like a, a brief period of adjustment and alignment with the uh, norms of college and just being away from home for sure. But I was, my, my dad was an army rat, so he was already being put through like consistency of either like moving around in the different environments that he had to um, be in as being growing up. And my mom's from Jersey, so she's no nonsense. All kinds of nonsense, but at the same time, no nonsense. Um, so in lieu of that, um, I learned how to do my laundry at a very early age, just like helping my mom with it on Saturday or... Um, I, like, I also learned how to cook fairly early on. I was in Boy Scouts, so like that was something that was just a necessity on camping trips. Um, so I personally, I was put through different experiences that prepared me for both consistency and inconsistency. So um, the Boy Scout motto is be prepared. I was definitely prepared for being away from home because of a lot of unconventional experiences. Like even, so you mentioned doing your laundry and just like following a routine of, uh, going to bed at a certain hour and being up on time at a certain hour. Those routines are built through like going to high school, but also like there's a bunch of other little experiences like going to your friend's house and finding out, oh my gosh, they have so many responsibilities, but you like admire their friends. So you want to like be able to uh, look up to them and relate to them at the same time. So there's like dozens of different situations where like these things are applicable. But um, yeah, these, these uh, systems, you, you definitely fall into them. Um, just as you're growing up, you know? So, talked a little bit about Boy Scouts, other opportunities outside of school. Um, where did that, let me rephrase this. We're gonna kind of move into a different section mm -hmm. of this, and it can be a personal section for some people. Um, when it comes to money, you are a Boy Scout. And that requires a financial commitment. Um, other activities, um, such as, this is going to be a super private school thing, but this man right here played water polo in high school. You don't have those opportunities in public school. That is, that's a little comparison there. It's a little off topic. But making financial commitments so that you can be responsible to take care of those things, you feel like that's what prepared you instead of school? You, I can definitely attribute some of that to those um, extracurriculars, like having a, a degree of coordination and just going about life kind of with a plan, like a, like a game plan or like a plan like for a camping trip, like an itinerary. Well, and time management as well. Time management is also Being huge. able to study and also play a sport. Mm -hmm. I mean, both of us were athletes, mm -hmm. and so we know that right after school, it was practice, then a game, and then you had to study and to get your homework mm -hmm. done because... You're not just an athlete, you're a student athlete. Mm -hmm. um, so time management is such a big thing in college as well. Time management, and although you briefly mentioned it, money management is also important too. Money management. Because I can't tell you how many times on our way back from water polo games, we were exhausted and all we wanted to do was bite into like 30 chicken sandwiches from Chick-fil-A, but we knew we couldn't because money's important. Yep, exactly. So we've compared public schools to private schools. Mm -hmm. We've talked about what successes and how we've reached the point that we've gotten to. I think we've both been pretty successful so far. Um, do you think that we've come to a conclusion of which one is better, a public school or a private school? Ye yes. Yes. And let me tell you, it's almost even. But I think we have. Do you want me to say it? Go for it. I think that public school actually better prepares you for um, life outside of school or life outside of college or just for life. Um, because although like with, with the stigma that, oh, you go to private school, so clearly you have money. Yes, there's, the money is there, but it's being directed toward a various number of consistent activities or consistent uh, extracurriculars. Whereas in public school, yes, those activities are still there, they're just a different variety, but there's a dozen and a half different experiences that come with those. So those can prepare you indirectly. Um, and because those are indirect experiences, they help you develop practical skills. And let me just point this out real quick. Um, we have an interesting thing here with this source, and it talks about the socioeconomic distress, basically saying 
there is financial trouble within the family. Um, it's, li it's more likely that if you have socioeconomic distress, that you will not be as prepared for life and college. And I think that the reason behind that is because you don't have the money to go and ACT prep, do ACT prep, mm -hmm. pay a tutor to help you in school. Be motivated to be like your parents and make enough money and be successful. Um, you don't have that motivation behind you. And obviously that's why a lot of people say, oh, private schools are better because they have more money, they have more resources. But I know people in public schools that were filthy rich and did just as well because they had the resources. So is it a resource or is it just where you go to school? Um, both could work hand in hand. I think um, so as well. Just quickly because the reason is like, again, the money could be there in private schools or public schools. And you know, like the resources are there, the activities are there, but it's like the, your utilization of those, taking exactly. advantage of the opportunities. I would have to agree with that. Well, I think this wraps up our conversation. Um, we'd love to know what you guys think. and um, Leave hope. your opinions in the comments below. Feel free to like and subscribe. We're here all week. Take it easy, fam. Rock on. Peace. <laughs> <laughs>